Grab a drink, get comfy, and prepare to learn about the strange, the unusual, and the downright stupid things you didn't think that you needed to know about. I'm Kayla. And I'm Brooke. And, and this, this is Drunk in the Library. you missed us we missed you a little bit ah, just kidding a lot i did I <laughs> all righty do we have any questions comments concerns from last time we do not okay we've been pretty good about that yeah oh wait no we do have one that we probably didn't write down but i remember <laughs> what so <laughs> do we have an answer to it then? i do i do because i racked my brain for the answer so i said that the um Balto's girlfriend's oh, name. Oh, right. I have that written down, and I was like, oh, nobody's going to care about that. I said that Balto's girlfriend's name was Rosie. It's not. It's Jenna. Rosie's a little girl that has diphtheria. How dare you? I know. I know. <laughs> I, I thought about it, too, when we were done with that episode, and I was like, fuck. I guess I'll bring it up next time. I fucking love that movie. All right. So real fast, before Brooke starts on her topic, uh, just don't forget to like us, support us, subscribe to us, rate, review us, do all of the things. Yes, please do all of the things. Whoever's also been um, sending the little ratings on Apple, I love you. Because yeah, we have yeah, 11 we five-star guys. ratings. I know. Is, it's more than 10. It's more than 10. It's double is, digits. <laughs> <laughs> well, 10 is double digits, too. Well, yeah, but, but... I was very excited when I saw that. I yeah. check all the time. Was also, one of them mine? Yeah. I mean, I know a couple of them, but I mean, there's other people who I don't know who's doing it. Yeah, I don't know 11 people. (laughs) I might, but not enough of them to do things like that. So thank you for whoever did that. And keep it up. Keep rating and doing all the things. Also visit our website because we worked really hard on it and it's kind of cool. Yeah. Other than that, I think that's it for support. So thank you. All right, Brooke, what do you got? All right. What are we talking about today, Brookies? We are going to talk about something actually really strange, and it's kind of a collective of things. Do you know about the year 1816? I assume it was after 1815. Correct. (laughs) What else do you know? Anything? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I didn't come here to get quizzed. (laughs) Well, you'll get quizzed after this then when you have the information. So, 1816 was known as the year without a summer. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Poor K. A lot lot of weird fucking shit happened during uh, 1816, starting with one event that happened in 1815. Oh. So, my sources are Wikipedia, Ranker, and uh, Smithsonian Mag. So, 1816 was basically the ancient 2020. It was fucking shit show. The ancient 2020. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Not ancient. Modern ancient, I guess we'll call it. It wasn't like... You know. 2020 will be the year without a spring. 1816 was the year without a summer. Well, 2020 is the year without anything because yeah. no one's allowed to do anything. So, yeah, at least 1816 just got to buy on not having a summer. I mean, oh, no, there's a lot of other shit that happened. I lied. Um, so a lot of events happened that basically changed the, the world as we know it. Um, so starting in April of 1815, Mount Tambora erupts. Okay. So Mount Tambora is situated in Indonesia. It's a volcano, obviously, because mountains sure. don't just fucking erupt. Most of them. <laughs> it's got to be a volcano. Wouldn't that be a surprise? I would fucking, I would have a lot of other fears. Sounds like July of 2020. Yeah, basically. Um, so yeah, it, it erupted in 1815, but the long-term effects wouldn't be noticed until 1816. Um, so it was said to be, even to this day, one of the most powerful eruptions the world had ever seen. Um, given that, like, in 1880-something, Krakatoa erupted, and that was a huge Mm -hmm. eruption. This Mm -hmm. was bigger than that. Um, you know what I'm gonna reference from Krakatoa, right? 
God. the only reference I know of Krakatoa. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. when it's when SpongeBob yep. does the superhero thing, <laughs> and then Squidward is Krakatoa, yep. and then he just goes Krakatoa. Yep, <laughs> and that's basically all I know of Krakatoa as well. Okay, I get Good. it. Confused. Glad we're on the same page. <laughs> I get it confused with um what the um in <laughs> in Roanoke. What did they write on those Croatoa? Yeah. <laughs> I get those two confused. <laughs> They sound the same to me. You know what? That's fair. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, it erupted. Gases, dust, and rock were shot like 12 cubic miles into the air in the surrounding area. Ash burned down basically all the forests and killed all the surrounding crops. Um, lava poured into the sea, created like these huge slabs of pumice, which trapped all the ships in the harbor so nobody could fucking leave. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, so, they kept having major eruptions until July. Holy um, shit. So that's kind of when they start seeing, like, the the beginning of, like, the long-term mm-hmm. effects. Um, so due to the ash, the water became uh, contaminated and undrinkable. Crops died. With that, sources of food died. Um, people were dying of starvation because they had no food, Holy no shit. clean water, nothing. And where was um, this? Indonesia? Indonesia. Okay. Um, but other surrounding areas yeah, were affected, it, obviously. Because it was a huge eruption. Yeah. Um, so, like... You know, their homes and livelihoods had been destroyed. Sunlight became blocked for months all over the world. Wow. So, like, we're delving into darkness. Literally. Um, this caused, like, the temperature around the world to drop three degrees, which doesn't seem like a lot, but, like, when you're dropping the world temperature that quickly, yeah, you're going to have some really... Bad side effects. Bad side effects that happen. Um, so the northern hemisphere saw heavier amounts of rainfall. Parts of Asia um, had floods basically that destroyed all the crops um the drop in temperature killed animals because they weren't used to like it being so cold all of a sudden um the united states saw winter in the summer with a few instances of snow in june and even on fourth of july wow yeah um american farmers are dealing with a lot of like failing crops therefore they moved out west hoping that they were going to find warmer temperatures and more like fertile ground um and in moving west, that actually brought about Indiana becoming a state in 1816, hmm. and then Illinois becoming a state in 1818. So, like, some things came out of this mm-hmm. that were, like, positive. But um, that probably wouldn't have happened until later if, like, the eruption didn't happen. Right. Um, the eastern part of the of North America experienced a dry fog that dimmed the sunlight so much that you can actually see sunspots with the naked eye. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. What's Uh, crazy is that I haven't heard of this before. Yeah, I know. Ireland was hit with a potato famine. Not the potato famine. Oh, just a potato famine. A a pretty large one. Wasn't the potato famine, like, a similar time, though? Shortly after. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Um, maybe this was, like, the precursor to the potato famine? Yeah. This was the pre-potato famine. (laughs) Potato (laughs) famine part one. Part one. Um, Because they had eight weeks of nonstop rain. Wow. Yeah. Um, other parts of Europe and Great Britain were also experiencing a lot of excessive rain, so they couldn't grow any corn or wheat. Um, and then Ireland and then eventually the British Isles saw an outbreak of typhus, which is kind of like typhoid. Mm-hmm. I think it's like of the same family. And that killed thousands. Damn. Yeah. See, I already get like pretty bad like seasonally affected disorder, aka sad. So like <laughs> I would have been so sad during this. <laughs> I mean, I would have been sad because there would have been no food. I don't well, care about yeah, darkness. Well, yeah, that too. Oh, I do. I, mean, I, would have, I would have had to stay inside for like... Yeah, see, yeah, I have no problem months. with that. Also, blotch out the sun. I don't give a <laughs> shit. So, like, for me, I would have been like, this is fucking great. But then I also would have been like, there's no food or potatoes. And yeah. I'm very upset. Who, yeah, potatoes, man. <laughs> that's, that's... That's what sad. I'm taking out of this, is that there were no potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> the most important. <laughs> do you know what you could do with potatoes? Everything. Vodka, potato chips, French fries. All of the best things come from potatoes. All of the best things come from potatoes. Um, So then another thing that happened was Bengal experienced a cholera outbreak um, because their monsoon season was disrupted for three years following this. Hmm. How Um, did that cause a cholera outbreak? So the, um, because of them not getting the rain that they normally would get, the soil changed a little bit, so... 
a strain of cholera had like mutated uh, in the soil. Okay. Um. So then populations weren't able to fight this off because it was brand new to them. Gotcha. Um. And therefore, it spread to other parts of Asia. Asia, and they lost millions of people. Holy crap! That eruption alone, too, which I forgot to mention, um, had killed at least like ten thousand people instantly. Holy like, shit! Right after it, it erupted. Oh my god. Um, and they also had like multiple tsunamis. Wow. Because of it. Um, now, like, no one was prepared for this either, because once again, you can't prepare for an eruption. Second of all, the, they had just finished with the Napoleonic Wars, mm-hmm. so, like, they were facing, a sh- like, a food shortage. Right. So no already. one had, they didn't have time to build up that shortage, or build up their food stores. So now, like, they're, they're, they're like, extra fucked. They're extra fucked, yeah. Damn. Although this is kind of my favorite part in this, and you'll see why in a second. So, food prices, like, skyrocketed because of shortages, um, which caused rioting, looting, and arson. Rioters sometimes carried flags that said, bread or blood. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Which I think is amazing. (laughs) Bread or blood. You will give me food or I will make you bleed. Yes. I mean. I would like a flag that says bread or blood. that's, That's damn near close to how I live my life. Same bread or blood yeah if you don't feed me i get hangry and if i get hangry i might stab you yep also according to wikipedia these food riots were um so bad that in 1816 and 1817 they caused the highest levels of violence since the french revolution wow yo people love their fucking bread yeah and i think that really just goes to show you like what like hunger does to people yeah i mean like they say you're not you without a snickers but like I ain't me without fucking bread and pasta. Yeah. And other foods. Or potatoes. Or potatoes. All of the carbs. All of the carbs. Um, another weird side effect of this, which wasn't exactly like, it wasn't a bad thing. Um, the winds had like converged to actually push like a lot of the other wind up north more. Okay. Um, which were warmer. So it melted a lot of the Arctic ice. Oh. So In doing so, this kind of kicked off, like, the uh, Arctic Age of Exploration because now there was these passages that were opening up that weren't open before. So people could explore, like, Arctic areas. That's interesting. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Bad for the climate, but cool. Yeah. I mean, awful for the climate. Yeah. But, you know, what else? Aren't most things. What you gonna do? And then um, it also inhibited the uh, Chinese opium trade (laughs) because since all of the crops were being destroyed by the seasonally low temperatures and excessive rain, uh, farmers grew poppies instead because they were, like, hardier um, crops. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. You're not going to fucking eat a poppy, but... No, but they're, like, pretty hardy and they still can produce money for them, I guess, so... Well, they did because they, you know, produced opium opium. and then... yeah. You know, all the opium is the Chinese opium trade. Hmm. Um, also, another fun fact was that this bad weather actually helped set the scene for Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. <gasps> so she was vacationing in, with her uh, husband and friends in Lake Geneva in Switzerland in the summer of 1816. And the, fe- the weather um, forced them inside where they sat telling ghost stories and the rest is history. Oh, my God. I love it. Yeah. So... Uh, who would have guessed that this fucking weird ass eruption man the wings of a butterfly out, that w- blacked out the sun created frankenstein um so then mary she- shelley is made of stronger stuff than I, than i am because when i was forced to sit in my house for two months i wrote three words that was it <laughs> <laughs> and she's like frankenstein bitch <laughs> she literally creates science fiction i write nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, the other thing, though, to, like, note about this is that the world was already experiencing, like, a cooling period because we had already just come out of um, a warming period during the Middle Ages. So then we were in what they called, like, the Little Ice Age. Okay. So, like, we were already cooling. But mm-hmm. the, the problem is that this basically, like, forced the Earth to cool too quickly. Right. Like, it's different when it's happening gradually. But this just is, like... Too fuck fast. yeah three yeah. degrees down yeah so it was just like it sped things up um 
And then the last thing that I have here, which is really just a fun fact, um, due to the lack of feed for horses, horseless transportation needed to be invented, which gave us the bicycle known as the Velocipede. Ah, the Velocipede. My yep. favorite of all of the <laughs> non-horse-driven transportation. <laughs> yes. It's only because I like saying Velocipede. Yeah. And I like the image it conjures. Yep. A Velociraptor <laughs> centipede. Yeah. Which is not what it is. If anyone wants to know no. what a velocipede is, it's that bike with the one big fucking wheel. Yeah, and then the one itty bitty wheel. Yeah, velocipede. That is super and interesting. I didn't know any of that stuff, and I can't believe that like that whole like twisted turn of events was left out of every history book ever. Which is crazy because it changed everything. Yeah, like it was a huge eruption. There was a lot of like littler eruptions going on too at the mm-hmm. time that were still like pretty big in magnitude. Um, but I mean, it was changing the landscape, hmm. it's changing the way that people do things, and it's not making it any easier for the fucking sun to come back into focus. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it's super crazy. interesting. That's crazy. That's yeah. what I have for you on the year without of summer. Thank you. It's also like a year without a Santa Claus. That's all I keep thinking like of. <laughs> Yep. It's all I think of when I read this, A Year Without a Summer. A Year Without a Santa. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're very welcome. (laughs) (laughs) All right, what do you have for me today? All right, so my sources, I'm I'm remembering to tell you. So fucking proud of you. (laughs) I highlighted it so I would remember. Look at you getting your shit together. I (laughs) contemplated having a sticky note over here, writing it on my hand so I could just, like, Show it up without having to tell you. Our Wikipedia and FBI.gov. Oh, okay. Uh, so, thank you. Mm-hmm. Bonnie Elizabeth Parker was born on October 1st, 1910 in Rowena, Texas. Ooh, I know what this is. Her father died when she was four years old. Mm-hmm. And her mother moved her and her two siblings to an area in West Dallas known as Cement City. Okay. Why they called it Cement City, I don't know. Maybe. Don't all cities have a lot of cement? Mm, maybe i don't know that's for cement city to know and us to find out um <laughs> as a sophomore in high school bonnie met roy thompson Thor- thornton sorry thompson thornton same thing the pair Close. dropped out of school and just before her 16th birthday they got married yeah, they um did. they never divorced yep. but they never saw each other again after 1929 Thornton went to jail for robbery in 1933, and he was killed in prison in 1937 during an escape attempt. Mm-hmm. You're looking at me like you know all of this. I don't, but oh, okay, I know where okay, this good, is going. Good, good. Uh, Bonnie wrote poetry. Oh. Clyde Chestnut Barrow. Of course. Was born to a very poor family outside of Dallas in 1909. Could you imagine your middle name being Chestnut? Right? What, like, a <laughs> weird... I, I literally thought the same thing as I was typing this out. I was like, that's a really weird choice for a middle name. You're like, But oh, okay, what do like I know? Clyde mm, Chestnut. Chestnut. All of his siblings had, like, strange names, though. Um, like, he had... I don't think I wrote it down, but he had several siblings. One of them was named Marvin. The other one... Was his name, like, middle name Acorn or something? That I don't know. I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> it's like, um, what's that actor? Um, oh, my God. What the fuck is his name? Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, I was going to guess Joaquin yes, Phoenix. All his siblings his, have weird fucking yeah, names. Yeah, one of them is, like, Rim, River. His brother was... There's, yeah, like, a his Liberty. brother was River. I feel like one of them is, like, Rainbow. Something, yeah. He's got a lot of yeah, weird Yeah, weird He's names. also, I just saw the other day, side note, nobody cares, um, he's expecting his first baby. With who? Um, I think Rooney Mara. I was going to say, it's Rooney Mara, yeah. isn't it? Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought they were a weird couple, but okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, what do I know? Yeah, I don't know anything. Uh, Anyway, Clyde was born to a very poor family outside of Dallas in 1909. Mm -hmm. Clyde's family was super poor. Like, there was a several-year span in his childhood where they lived under their wagon until they could afford a tent. Yeah, they were, like, super poor. I know I shouldn't feel bad for him. No. Because, like, I know he did bad things. I started off this story, like, yeah, Bonnie and Clyde, and then by the end I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, it's a... (laughs) It's rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He first went to prison in 1926, and then shortly after, again, for possession of stolen turkeys. Okay. (laughs) Like, live turkeys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, he, he, like, stole somebody's turkeys and got arrested for it and went to jail. I mean, I have no interest in stealing a live turkey. 
a rotisserie turkey, on the other hand. I don't have interest in stealing either of those things. I mean, I don't have interest in stealing, but if I had to pick, I would pick a rotisserie turkey. Yeah, who wants a live turkey? I mean, no, I I'm guess if you're, like, super that. poor, then okay. Sure. I guess so. Um, in January of 1930, the pair met uh, through a mutual friend. They hit it off very, very quickly and began, began spending a lot of time together immediately. Uh-oh, Barry. Yeah, oh, do your crap. thing. I can listen to you. I'll let him out. Okay. Um, I know, buddy. I'm letting you out. Ah, uh, he's gonna run from you. Oh, I got it. No, keep recording. That's fine. Okay. Keep telling me. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. However, in April of 1930, um, Barrow was arrested for auto theft and sent to Eastham Prison Farm. Did you know that prisons were farms sometimes? No, I did not. Well, he was sent to a prison farm, whatever that means. Uh, Parker was able to, like, sneak him some sort of a tool and helped him escape from prison. Okay. Yeah. I mean... I mean, I guess, like, year if was you're this in again? love... This was in 1930. Oh, wow. This is way more recent than I imagined it Bonnie to be. Bonnie Clyde to be, yeah. Like, I'm thinking, like, Wild Wild West. I know! <laughs> I associate them, too, with Wild Wild West, but, no, it was Wild Wild 1930s. Well, it's mm-hmm. a dangerous time. Yeah. Um, Clyde was recaptured after his escape from prison and sent back to prison, where he unfortunately suffered through some, like, seriously traumatizing sexual abuse. In prison? Yeah. Um, so, what does Clyde do? He bashes in the inmate's head. As one does, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like, this is the one time that I'm maybe on his side. I guess so, yeah. I mean, I am. I also want to know, just like a side note, where, why are, like, lead pipes readily available in prisons? <laughs> because I feel like I've heard a lot of people bashing people's heads in with lead pipes, and it's like, what is this, Clue? Right? <laughs> I had the same thought when I was typing this out. I was like, what is this fucking Clue? Did you it was, use it was a fucking... with a lead pipe in the prison? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, you have, did you have a candle stick <laughs> I guess just because of, like, the pipes and stuff are all made from lead. So, so, like, you take that apart and you got a lead pipe. <laughs> um, he did not, however, get accused of this as another inmate took the blame. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this was the first murder that Clyde committed, but it will not be his last by the time no, we're it done will here not. today. Um, Barrow or another inmate, not entirely sure which chopped off two of Clyde's toes to get him out of working, like, intense labor. Uh, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about this. <laughs> on the one hand, on the one I get foot. it. <laughs> on the one foot, I got three toes. On the other, I got five. <laughs> wow. Yeah, part of me is like, that's really nice. And then the other part's like, what the fuck? Right, right. So... Um, so Six days after that, he chopped off his toes to get out of doing hard labor. All the toes? No, just two of them. Oh, okay. Six days later, after he did that, he was released from prison. Oh, I thought he went back and got more like, chopped off. <laughs> I was like, what he, the he fuck, bro? Are they more. still making you work with, lo- like, losing two toes and you oh chopped the rest God. of them? <laughs> uh, yeah, so then he was released from prison. Obviously, Bonnie and Clyde got back together because yeah. nothing's going to stop these two, man. Absolutely. Um, he kind of enlisted Bonnie into his life of crime. Um, and interestingly enough, they were on a mission not for wealth or fame, but for justice against the cruelties done to him by the justice system. Okay. So, like, their goal was never to be rich and famous. It was just to get payback on the justice system. Okay. It's a very noble like, cause. It is. Like, if that had been the real case, I would have been yeah, behind that. sure, sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the partner, uh, the pair kind of enlisted a partner. His name was Raymond Hamilton in armed robberies. Um, they mostly robbed stores and gas stations at first. Again, thinking of the 1930s and gas stations is like, I forget that there were gas stations, you know? Yeah. Um, in April of 1932, Bonnie was captured during a failed robbery and served a few months in jail. Okay. Um, but she was eventually indicted and released. Also in April, I think it was April 30th, if I'm not mistaken, Clyde was the getaway driver of a robbery where the owner of the store was shot and killed. Oh. He did no jail time for this crime. Uh, after the pair was reunited when Bonnie got out of prison, 
their crime spree just carried on. Mm-hmm. On August 5th, Barrow, Hamilton, and another friend were drinking moonshine outside of a country dance. I just don't know what a country dance is. It's probably, like, where they do, like, line dancing and shit. Probably. It's the most, like, southern 1930s it literally of all is. time. Uh, when they were approached by a few police officers. The gang just opened fire on these officers, killing one and badly wounding the other. This okay. was the first time Clyde killed an officer, but again, it will not be the last. Nope. It will not be. It will not. Hamilton eventually left their little gang and was replaced by 16-year-old W.D. Jones um, on Christmas Eve of 1932. The next day, so Christmas Day, Clyde and W.D. killed a man and stole his car. Really racking up the bodies here. We're really racking up the bodies. Later in January, they killed Deputy Malcolm Davis after they accidentally wandered into a trap set by cops for another cop. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So now, from April to uh, January, their total of bodies is five. Not good, man. It's more than it's more than the average person has. It's more than four. (laughs) It's more than four. (laughs) Less than it will be, but more than four. In March of 1933, Clyde's brother Buck and his wife Blanche joined their little gang at a hideout in Joplin, Missouri. So now we've got the five of them. They're all just hanging out. Um, appar- like, supposedly, Buck and Blanche were there to persuade Bonnie and Clyde to leave their life of crime behind them. However, they had a really weird way of doing so because they were up, like, until all hours of the night being really loud and playing card games. Um, That's how you convince people to do what you want. Yeah, like, if I beat you in cards, you can't kill anybody else, right? Yeah, you right? just make a, you make a deal, you make a pinky promise, and then <laughs> yeah. that's it. It's done. According to Blanche, uh, during these days in Joplin, they went through a case of beer a day. That's a with, lot of wait, beer. Wait, between the four of them? Five. Oh, but it's yeah. not that bad. It's a decent amount a day. Okay. They're buying a case of beer every day. That's not that bad. <laughs> between five people? Not a six-pack, Brookie. I know. If we're talking like a, what do you, they come in like the cases of 12s? No, 30. 30? Yeah. So six beers, okay, that might be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. <laughs> I assume that the men are drinking more, to be fair. because So they're drinking like I mean, seven, eight apiece. Yeah. That's so a lot. Like, you've seen our friends drink. <laughs> Yeah, once a month, eight beers, it's okay. Every day. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe you have a little titch of alcoholism then. Um, so due to their raucous behavior, the police were alerted to their suspicious activities. The police thought that they were going to be like a crew of bootleggers. Okay. So they got ready for like an ambush, basically. I, this fly is fucking I know. massive. We've got a couple of them in the house right now. Barry is usually really good at getting them, but he's been failing me the last day or two. Well, he's too fucking Little scared shithead. to come out in there. Um, so on April 13th, which is almost one year after their crime sp- spree began, mm-hmm. the police force of Joplin staged an ambush. Both sides just kind of like opened fire, and two more officers were killed. Oh, um, Bonnie held the forces back while the others kind of, like, darted out to their car, mm-hmm. uh, pulling Blanche into the vehicle as they left because she was pursuing her dog, Snowball. Oh. I don't know what happened to Snowball. I'm very sorry. I know. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's just pretend, like, Snowball made it through. Absolutely. Snowball found a new family that wasn't, like, a bunch of criminals. Yeah, absolutely. He, he, nice he survived. Lady. Yeah. I imagine he was probably a white dog because... I would imagine. So, you're not going to name, like, Snowball. Yeah. Like, so, he went to a nice old lady. Yes. He's fine. Yeah, He did well. He's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's still alive. Um, the officers later testified that they only managed to get off 14 rounds during this, like, open firing okay. thing. So, like, the gang, the Barrow gang, as they came to be known, was just, like, shooting off. The cops only got off 14 rounds. Jesus. Um, Jones was hit in the side. Clyde was struck, but but the bullet, like, deflected on his butt, like, his cup, coat button. That's fucking lucky yeah and um one bullet had grazed buck it was like a ricochet shot that Mm. grazed him the group escaped but lost most of their possessions 
among those possessions were a few ro- rolls of film that they had been, like, using. Okay. Um, they d- got that film developed, and that's, like, a lot of the photos that you see of Bonnie and Clyde. They were all kind of, like, posing with weapons and mm-hmm. cigars. Um, that stuff got published in a local newspaper, as well as a poem that Bonnie had written that was that they found there. Oh, yeah, I forgot that she writes. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's so weird. So, yeah, it doesn't really quite fit with the rest of this vibe. It's just like, yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> Do you, though? Is mm-hmm. it good? Yeah, mm, I don't think so. Um, so later on, the group was in Platte City, Missouri, sometime during the summer of 33. Okay. And the group, um, they had, like, rented two cabins, and they were up to some, like, a little bit of weird stuff the owners of the cabins noticed. Mm-hmm. They had said that there were only three people, but the guy who, like, rented them the cabin saw five getting out of the car. They, like, backed the the car into a garage in what the guy described as, like, a gangster fashion. I guess, like, <laughs> so they could all hop in it if they needed to make a quick getaway uh, and just, like, peel out. Okay. Um, they covered all of the windows in newspaper. Yeah, it's a little... A little bit weird. Scarcity, yeah. you know. They were seen, like, at the local dr- uh, drugstore, like, buying a bunch of supplies to, he- like, treat the wounds that they... That Jones and Buck had gotten. Mm-hmm. Um... Long story short, the local police were tipped off from all of the fishy behavior, uh, which led to another ambush. Okay. The police opened fire on the group, and they opened fire right back. There was some sort of, like, machinery mishap here uh, mm-hmm. that basically led to the police thinking that they had called a ceasefire. Okay. Which allowed the gang to just kind of leave, and the police didn't pursue them. Okay. Yeah. Not entirely sure how but Mm, okay what do i know (laughs) um however buck and blanche were pretty badly wounded in this firefight okay according to wikipedia and this is a quote buck had sustained a bullet wound that blasted a large hole in his forehead skull bone and exposed his injured brain and blanche was nearly blinded by glass fragments in both her eyes oh my god yeah so um they were in another shootout about five days later um buck and blanche were captured during that one buck died of his injuries but blanche survived um but she did lose vision in one of her eyes she uh was sentenced to 10 years in prison for attempted murder um there was another attempt to capture in bonnie Cl- bonnie and clyde in november which resulted in an attorney being held at gunpoint and his car being stolen then in december they robbed a citizen in louisiana uh, in January of 1934, we're just, like, rolling through it at this point. Oh there's, God, there's like, like, so much that they do. <laughs> Holy shit. So, January of 1934, Clyde and Bonnie aided in, in the escape of five prisoners, um, including their good old friend, Ram- Ra- Raymond Hamilton, who was serving mm-hmm. 200 years of jail time Jesus. from the East Hymn State Prison. Two guards were shot in their escape, and Barrow covered their retreat, retreat with gunfire. Um, April 1st, 1934, Bonnie and Clyde shot and killed two highway patrolmen before the op- officers even drew their guns in Texas. Not good. Not, Not good. good. On April 6th, 1934, an Oklahoma constable was fatally wounded by the duo and another officer was held, was uh, caught and held hostage by them. So bad. Yeah. So now I think we're up to like six or seven officers that they've killed. Yeah. Yeah. So um many. yeah it's it's way too many law enforcement was able to follow some like pretty easy clues because basically the group had like a pattern mm-hmm. they would kind of skirt the edges of the southern states because there was a law back then that if a chase um was pursued over state lines the cops could not travel over state lines because it was out of their jurisdiction so bonnie and clyde really like took advantage of this loophole and would basically just like weave state lines And that's how they got away with this for so long. But they, like I said, they did it in a very patterned manner. So the FBI was eventually able to kind of track them through this Mm -hmm. and eventually was able to catch up with them. Um, They were tracked down around New Orleans because they had stolen a car that that the FBI was able to trace basically from another like crime family. Uh, on May 3rd, 1934, the law finally caught up, caught up with Bonnie and Clyde. They were killed on a rural road in Beanville, 
Bienville Parish, Louisiana. Officers fired 130 rounds into their Holy car. Holy shit. And just killed the both of them instantly. It said that oh um, Clyde was shot, like, taken out immediately with a headshot. They heard Bonnie scream, but kept continued firing. And um, there were, wo- like, so many, about a quarter of those shots hit one of them. And uh, there were so many wounds, they couldn't tell which was, like, the one that killed them. Jesus. I think yeah. I knew that part, though. This Honestly, how they died is the only part that I knew. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows Bonnie and Clyde went out with Bang, like. Literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I didn't know, like, any of the story leading up yeah, to it. Yeah, me either. Um, so a lot of souvenirs were picked up by, like, locals from the scene of the crime. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody wanted, like, uh, shell casings and stuff like that. And, I mean, there were a ton of them. Um, the pair had wanted to be buried side by side, but the Parker family, Bonnie's family, was kind of against that. Um, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, she she, wasn't exactly, like, good girl. No. Um, more than 20,000 people attended Bonnie's burial. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Uh, making it difficult for the family to even get to her gravesite. Clyde had a private burial with his family in attendance, but, like, people had really wanted to be at his, too, but the family, like, kind of put, could have put a kibosh on that. They're fucking criminals. What is wrong they with were, people? They were, like, super famous at the time for, like, evading the law, basically. I think it's kind of, like, the fascination that surrounds, like, any criminal nowadays, like, the O.J. Simpson case, or even, like, Jeffrey Dahmer, that, like, people kind of have this, like, morbid curiosity about them. I guess so, but in those cases, those are both, like, really strange things. Like, this is just, like, they were a bunch of fucking robbers that just kept getting away with it. Yeah. But only because they kept skirting the police, not because, like, they kept getting let It wasn't because of, like, their intelligence or anything like that. Like, it was literally just a bunch of lucky breaks. Because, like, they just kept going. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Clyde was eventually buried next to his brother Marvin. Um, the pair had achieved, like, intense popularity. Newspapers sent flowers to the burials of both of them. They sent, like, these enormous flowers to thank the family for selling so many newspapers. That's kind of... I mean, like, it's it's nice, but, like, at the same time, like, it's, it's crazy. Like, people were... Th- like, these newspapers were thankful because they had sold so many newspapers because people were so interested in the story. It's like, thanks for birthing the criminals so that we could sell fucking papers. Yeah. Like... Um, so if anybody's interested, you can still see the, like, bullet-riddled Ford. It's on display in, um, and as well as a shirt that Clyde died in, um, in Whiskey Pete's Casino in Prim, Nevada. Um, so in total, the pair was responsible for the death of at least 13 people. Holy shit. Yeah. And, uh, this is just kind of like a little side note, but, um, robbing banks and kidnapping officials wasn't a federal offense until the summer of 1934. What? Yeah. So, like... You could just... I, fucking banks. It wasn't a federal offense. So it was still It was a crime. still, like, a crime, but it wasn't, like... A federal offense until 1934. (laughs) What? Do you know what what I'm taking away from this, too? Which is just, like, so crazy. And I'm probably going to bring it up any time we talk about, like, an older, like, thing. Was that that was the year my dad was born? Wow. (laughs) What? Like, (laughs) in August. Oh, my God. So two months later, my dad entered the world. Wow. He could have lived during the time of Bonnie and Clyde. (laughs) He could have been the reincarnation of one of them. (laughs) Jesus Christ, I hope not. Oh, man. That's so funny. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, but I I just thought it was interesting because I, everybody knows the name Bonnie and Clyde, but but how many people actually know what happened? I didn't. I just thought that they were just criminals that just were like... Hey, we're going to be lovers and also criminals. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, because I feel like it gets romanticized so much. Yeah. And, I mean, like, they were pretty, like, pretty hard into each other. But I think once you commit a crime, what's... (laughs) (laughs) Do you have a choice? Yeah, yeah, right? Like, I think you're kind of connected forever, so... I don't know. Yeah. Um, That was recommended to me by my friend Heather from work, so shout out to Heather. Hmm. Um, But, yeah. Cool. Bonnie and Clyde, man. Bonnie and Clyde, man fucking crazy anyway do you have any book recommendations for that anything Mm. that you're reading anything anything (laughs) i'm actually not really reading anything right now are you i mean i am on harry potter yep but i'm on the last (laughs) book i have like 
fucking 30 minutes left. Really? I am Damn, like, you've flown through those. I have been listening for fucking hours at a time. <laughs> Anytime I'm doing something that doesn't require sound anywhere, I'm like, let me turn it on. <laughs> hours. It, it's fucking weird that I'm I almost know. done with it. Like, yeah. What am I going to read? You now? said you have like 30 minutes left of the last book? Probably. Just about 30 minutes. Have you, have you hit like the big showdown yet? We're on it. Oh, man. That yeah. part made me so emotional. Yeah. I forgot, like, when I read them as a kid, that Harry makes this, like, speech right before he goes up against Voldemort. Like, oh, at the see, last I haven't time. hit that yet. He literally just, like, popped back up to life. So, Dude. Oh, um, man. You're, you're like, right there then. I know. That speech is, like, Naturally, so I just, good. like, hit it as soon as I pulled up to your house. <laughs> and I was like, should I just turn on my car for a little bit longer and listen to it? But I'll probably finish it on my way home. You will, like, yeah. Oh, it's, man. It was just so fucking good yeah so good yeah i was getting i was like on my way here and i'm listening and i'm like i'm gonna fucking cry this is so sad Uh uh-huh like when he has the resurrection stone he's talking to his fucking parents oh my god my soul was just like and it's like it never gets better you know what i mean like no matter how many times you listen to it no matter how many times you read it no matter how many times you watch the movies it never gets i think it gets harder yeah Gets because you understand it more. Yeah. So it was fucking heartbreaking. I was like, I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna ruin my makeup on the way here. <sighs> so yeah, that's all I got right now. I haven't really, uh, I haven't devoted myself to anything because I just want to finish these books. So yeah, got nothing. Got nothing for recommendations on this stuff. I don't even know if there's any books about. Um, I'd be year curious to find out because I am like that is super interesting. There's probably a thousand more things that happened during this time. This just I kind of yeah. broke it down to the major players, the bigger events. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and I know that there's books on Bonnie and Clyde. Oh yeah, absolutely, and probably like yeah. hundreds. So yeah, that's all. Uh, that's all we got for you guys this week. Short little quick episode. Yeah. Well, hope everybody enjoyed it, and uh, we will be back next week as we usually are. So yeah, that's all. That is all. Yeah, that's all. (laughs) Bye. Bye.